In this Chapter 6 Homework Helper, we're going to take a look at the easiest way to do problems from Chapter 6, Section 1. Every semester, I get a lot of similar questions, and I think it's because when we do the notes for Chapter 6, we are not only doing the notes for Chapter 6.1, but we're also doing Section 2 as well. In 6.1, we're only given the empirical rule and the empirical rule chops the normal curve up into different percentages between the first, second, and third standard deviation. In the second section, which deals with more talking about chopping up that uh, normal curve, we're told about the z-score formula and then the table, the z-table, to uh, take that z-score and turn it into a percentile above and below and between two uh, z-scores. And then we learn on the last page, which is currently page five of your notes, we learn how to take the normal CDF function on the calculator to determine how much percent is between or above or below uh, a, a score not just a z-score, but actually a, a score here. And that's where some of the difficulty comes in with this first problem. Because the last thing that we learned was the normal CDF, which might feel like this would be a pretty good fit for this first homework problem in 6.1. But in 6.1, you actually don't have the normal CDF. You actually have just the empirical rule. And you can see by my gray highlighting of this problem the first problem that you get in XYZ homework for this section, is that it wants you to use the empirical rule. So using the z-score formulas or using the normal CDF is going to be a problem here because the empirical rule, which we will take a look at here in this picture from my notes, the empirical rule is actually an estimate. It's not accurate. It's an estimate of how much of the population is within one standard deviation above mu and below mu, or we would say above and below the norm, which is above and below the average. So what this picture illustrates, it illustrates that the empirical rule um, shows you that 68% of the population is within one standard deviation and 95% of the population is within two standard deviations and 99.7% of the population is within three standard deviations. Now, if you go back to that video, you can see how I derive these red numbers. And these red numbers were done just with addition and subtraction and division. You can see that the 68%, if divided by two, would give you 34 and 34. But now that you have looked at your Z chart, you'll notice that if you go to the first standard deviation, or one, on your z-chart or negative one on your z-chart, you notice you will not be exactly 0 0.3400 above or below that 50 percentile. So using your z-chart or using normal CDF, you will not get the right answer when asked for the empirical rule. So let's use just the empirical rule for this problem. Okay. So it says in this mid-sized company, the distribution of the number of phone calls answered each day by each of the receptionists, by the way, the number of receptionists is not needed here since we're gonna use the empirical rule, has a mean of 42 and a standard deviation of five. What is the approximate percentage of daily phone calls between 37 and 47? Now I know what you wanna do is you wanna basically take your normal CDF formula because you have your lower and higher limit here and type it in. But XYZ will keep telling you that you have the wrong answer. So let's show you how you would do a similar problem to this one using your empirical rule. So here is a picture of a similar problem where instead of uh, an average of 42, this was an average of 46. And instead of a standard deviation of five, this is a standard deviation of four. So what we have is we now have a normal curve and I have my red numbers just like I do in my notes, but now I have put the average right where the mu is. 
And since I know my standard deviation, I know how far away each of these are numerically in the context of the problem. So here it is, 46 average with a standard deviation of 4. Now, if we go back to the problem, it asks between two numbers. And so let's say that this problem said, instead of the numbers 37 and 47, it says, what is the approximate, which is what we're doing with our um, uh, empirical rule, we're making an approximate. What is the approximate percentage of daily calls numbering between 37 and 47? So instead of using those, let's just use what I've highlighted, 38 and 54. So this right here gives us this highlighted section. And if I was to figure this out for the problem in XYZ, I would add up 13.5, 34, 34, and 13.5. All four of these added together would give me the answer I would need to do the problem. And I can just get out a graphing calculator and type that in. 13.5 plus 13.5 plus 34 plus 34. 95%. And honestly, this is the uh, empirical rule because it's within two standard deviations from the norm. Now, other problems inside of this section may not just go between the uh, two standard deviations away from the norm. Sometimes it might say, what is the percentage between, and they can pick the number 34 and 46. If you have to go between two numbers that like are 34 and 46, then you would just add all the red numbers that were between 34 and 46. So that would be, for example, 2.2. 35 plus 13.5 plus 34. That would be the percentage between 34 and 46. And sometimes they might just say above a certain number. Like let's take for example 54 or higher. And that would be then 2.35 plus 0.15. Don't forget that if they go all the way to the end of the normal curve, you're going to want to add up that little 0.15 at the very end. And this is how you use the empirical rule. Uh, you take your, your average that they give you in the problem. You put down your numbers above and below that average. And that creates your span so you can answer the question using the empirical rule. You'll notice in other problems, so let's go to question three and take a look at that that they actually give you the picture with the actual numbers laid out. And they tell you just maybe just for redundancies where they came from, the 1400 is the average and the standard deviation is 75. So it's actually pretty nice to actually see question three and question four, excuse me, question three, there's another one of these with the curve on them. It's neat to see question three before you get to some of the other, you know, non-pictured questions. And maybe in future videos or future assignments, I might reorder things to basically fit this flow. Well, that will get you through Chapter 6, Section 1. When you go to the next section, which is Chapter 6, Section 2, I strongly recommend that you lean heavily or almost exclusively on second VAR's normal CDF. Uh, and when you do your um, upper and lower bounds to infinity, make sure it's negative 1 times 10 to the 99th power. Make sure you put your caret key in there if you want to go to negative infinity. Or if you want to go to a positive infinity, I do have to put a lower, a lower limit in there. If you need to go to positive infinity, do 1 times 10 raised to the 99th power. Most of the time you can put in your logical lower and upper values if you are given the context of the problem, but if you're ever having to go above and below on your normal CDFs, just use the rules that I gave you for positive and negative infinity and use these normal CDFs to do the problems over the table values 
because it is nice to know how to find the table values and use your z-score formula, but you will be much more successful in XYZ homework if you use the normal CDF function on your calculator. Well, I hope this helps. I hope this definitely um, directs you into how to solve problems from 6.1. And as a final statement, if on the test or anything else, if you have to use the empirical rule, use exclusively what I taught to you in the notes and put your values under that empirical rule and solve from there. You won't get any more errors on XYZ. Thanks for watching.